Symptoms alone are not a good indicator of recovery. We know that based on those studies that I just showed you. So we need more objective measures. We need balance, reaction time, cognitive ability, memory, visual processing, uh, physical capacity, all these different types of things we need to know about somebody's function, not necessarily just their symptoms. Now, here's a study looking at neurocognitive testing, which is a popular way of doing this. Um, they find that at the asymptomatic time point, almost 40% of people are still showing dysfunction on computerized neurocognitive testing. So their recommendation here is that the exclusive use of symptom reports in making return to play decisions is not advised. A multifaceted approach to concussion assessment that includes evaluation of a myriad of functions is warranted. The problem is online computerized testing by itself is not sufficient. So although that test shows that there's dysfunction, it's going to miss some things. Neuropsychological tests should only be used as a part of a comprehensive concussion management strategy and should not be used in isolation. Now, they've been saying this for close to 10 years now. Unfortunately, it, across numerous places, people are still simply relying on the use of computerized testing. Here's, some, here's a study and a couple studies coming up to just drive that point home. Clinical utility of impact, which is a popular computerized test. We conclude that the empirical evidence does not support the use of impact testing for determining the time of post-concussion return to play. Test retest reliability of computerized concussion assessment programs. They assessed three different ones and they found that three contemporary computer-based concussion assessment programs evidence low to moderate test retest reliability. Uh, here's another one, impact test, retest reliability, reliably unreliable. And what they found was that um, uh, their conclusion was our current data support a multifaceted approach to concussion assessment using clinical examination, symptom reports, cognitive testing, and balance assessments. So computerized testing is an important component of your overall battery of things that you would do with an athlete. However, it shouldn't be the only thing you do. Right? And I think a lot of people fall into this trap of just saying, okay, well, I've done this, this computer test, that's good enough. But the problem is by itself, there's reliability issues like any one test, right? If you're concerned over somebody's knee injury, you're not going to do one orthopedic test and walk away, right? You're going to look at range of motion. You're going to look at strength. You're going to look at a variety of orthopedic tests to eventually arrive at what your you know, working diagnosis is. When it comes to concussion, it's the same thing. You can't just look at one particular test and think that that's enough and just walk away. So that's kind of the point I want to drive home is that these tests are important, but by themselves, they're useless. So we need comprehensive testing. The heterogeneity of concussion supports the movement towards multimodal concussion assessment, which is premised on the view that a single domain-specific outcome measure is insufficient for detecting the full spectrum of concussion sequelae. The multidimensional assessment approach recognizes this complexity and integrates outcome measures across multiple domains of functioning. So again, this is just to drive home single versus multimodal assessments. Here's a couple studies. King Devic, which is a concussion test that we utilize quite often, identified 53% of concussions by itself. The pitch side concussion assessment identified 74% of concussions by themselves. Cogsport identified 57% of concussions by itself. But together, they identified 100%, okay? Same goes for this one. One test by itself, 83, 75, 70. By themselves, or together, 92%. Uh, impact, symptom severity, sensory organization test, which is a, a balanced test. Uh, when each test was used se uh, separately, 47.5% of our sample was misclassified. When combined, almost 100% was classified appropriately. So again, any one tool by itself is insufficient. Um, this one here, again, this looked at, this is probably the largest study that looked at this, 4,800 people. Ultimately, while none of these measures individually meet the reliability standards set for clinical utility, there's evidence that combining them into a multifaceted assessment model provides a high level of sensitivity by comparing baseline performance to post-concussion changes in cognitive function. Now, I should say that any of these tests require pre-injury information on an athlete. We can't use normative data, right? We can't use, um, I'll get back to my orthopedic example, we can't just use our previous history of how certain things should feel because everybody, when it comes to neurocognitive function, balance, strength, uh, reaction time, everyone's so different that the range of normal is so wide that even some people with exceptional balance 
even while concussed, would still fall in the range of normal. So it's important to know prior to each season who has exceptional balance, who has terrible balance. At the same token, you don't want to be holding back an athlete for not having good balance when they've never had good balance, right? You want to make sure that you're comparing an individual to themselves with a margin of error, right? Anyone's going to have a margin of error. Things are going to fluctuate throughout a competitive season. People are generally going to get bigger, faster, stronger as the season goes off, particularly when you're dealing with high school and college age athletes or even younger, things are going to rapidly improve. So you're going to want to be doing this every single year to keep up to date, but you're also going to have to attach some sort of margin of error around any individual score. But looking at simply normative data is, has been found to be quite insufficient. So again, just driving this point home, there's so many studies on this that show that any one test by itself is pretty useless, but combining them into a full battery is the right way to go, provided there's baseline data to go with it.